that successful companies in Hungary, regardless of who, are, who they are owned by, should be able to be successful beyond the borders. I've been urging, I've been pushing, I've been advocating this desire of the and in our subsidy system, I always ask ministries to, to really test these successful companies abroad, and I think we're doing well in this sense. So there would be some kind of a year-end survey. I think what we would see is that in the past four or five years, we've seen a significant increase of such Hungarian economic champions who have gone abroad and who have made it abroad, who are expanding abroad, construction industry, IT, banking sector to energy. And I think that's good for Hungary. Okay, I understand that. If we open about the policy of eastward opening, uh, that necessarily is distancing yourself from the West. But if you look at from 2010 onwards, and the process, where are we? Are we halfway through? Are we one third? Are we on our way? Are we there already? It's a question of approach. I don't agree with your point of part. You can you look uh, at it like the Hungarian poet did, Adi, is that the East and the West and Hungary is moving back, back or forth between We don't want to tie Hungary this or there, here or there, we don't want to bind her here or there. The logic we follow is that if Hungary does not have relations with the East and does not bring Eastern capital here, we are going to be on the periphery on this interest, irrelevant periphery of the West. So the way to protect against this is to offer opportunities for the world that we can offer from here, or predominantly we can offer these. And Hungary is a country. We belong to the West. We are a member of NATO, a member of EU, Christianity. While the Westerners feel OK here, Easterners feel OK here. We have Eastern and Western investors as well. And it's not only are they here, but they cooperate in Hungary. Hungary has not gone anywhere. Hungary continues to be the same address where we've always been. We are not uh, a fairy state swinging back and forth between East and West. We want to show opportunities to East and West that creates cooperation in Hungary and increases the value of Hungary. That is what we've been experiencing in the past 10 years. I think our increase in significance is thanks to this. And the Easterners who are doing well here in Hungary, a very short response. The guest workers was perhaps one of the hottest topics uh, now, uh, this year, so much so that uh, mayors from Fidesz have been uh, advocating against the fact that major investments, constructions should start uh, guest uh, worker uh, Lodgement, accommodation facilities should be built. So is there anything in the management of this guest worker situation such that while we might, you say, might have not been uh, the best in successfully managing it, I do not accept the kind of statement any mayor should think of these issues based on popularity. I mean, you could consider your popularity, but the number one consideration is how can you serve the interests of people who live in the city that you leave. So members of parliament and members of local assemblies or mayors have the right to say yes or no to certain things. It's up to them because they are responsible for the main prosperity for the direction that their cities and settlements are going in. If you want a large project, you will have a large, you can have a large project. If you don't, you don't. You can decide that locally. The whole concept of guest workers, facts for the time being have not um, substantiated the fears. What we're seeing is Hungary still continues to have a substantial labor reserve.
zárójában mondom, csak energiátartalékkal is bőrvel, policy you will see that in the first step we have fulfilled our mission of basically bringing the two extremes, the eastern and the western sides of Hungary together. If you look at the major investments, uh, well, eastern investors, western investors have played a way in the East, we have had a series of projects that will bring up the Eastern territory of the country to the level of the Western territory. Of course, we need these projects to run out. Um, there are decisions made, projects are on the way. Our problem with the labor reserve now is north to south, so the new axis for uh, the unbalance is north and south. So industrial policy decisions should go now to south. And the way we had uh, the labor available locally in the east, uh, and if you looked at the unemployment figures, it is clear, we now have the same consideration for South. So what we expect is Szeged, Békés County, Szeged, Csanád County investment will actually mobilize hundreds of thousands of workers there that we have in reserve. So I say we don't need huge, major uh, contingent of guest workers. Second issue is that the government is not importing any guest workers. So is it private companies? What kind of regulations will we apply for private companies? Are we setting up good regulations to limit these private companies? We have made the rules stricter. I think the present rules are promising. It's just starting to be applied now. If we need to make it stricter, we will. But for the time being, I think every Hungarian can safely go to bed saying that workplaces in Hungary are for Hungarians. Nobody has the right to stay illegally in Hungary. And the moment the terms of their employment are over, they should leave the country. We only allow any guest workers to be imported from countries with whom we have extra extradition uh, treaties available. Uh, so we do not have the threat that Westerners uh, are under. We have studied many other countries' uh, precedents to find uh, the solutions. But of course, the merit of this new act is it will say precisely if you find the foreigner, it has to be clear what is the legal basis for them that they can be here. And otherwise, they can be deported. Um, before this was much more unsettled, I think we're going in the right direction. We are running out of time. Two short questions. So, Blick. Balázs Barnabás Blik, az elmúlt hetekben, hónapokban több kárpátai magyar politikus értelmiség is kifejezte a béli szándékát, hogy Ukrajna elkezdhetsen a folyamatokat. Szerintük ez az érdeke a kárpátai magyarságnak. A miniszterelnök úr, hogy látja, ha kizárólag a kárpátai magyarság személyvel nézett a helyzetet, akkor jól lenne előnyös lenne az uniós tagsága Ukrajnának? És azt történt, amit a magyarok elmondtak a kárpátai I think it's a bad decision, but de egyet ért a miniszterelnök úr azzal, hogy hogy kárpátai magyaroknak ez az érdeke. Do you agree that it is the interest of Hungarians and Transcarpathians that they will be better off? Lehet olyan, lehet ezt úgy csinálni, hogy jobban járnak. Yes, it could be done in a way that they would be better off. Úgy tűnik, hogy Györben a jelenlegi Fidesz polgármesternek kívülja, az előző Fidesz polgármester személyében, mi gondol Borkai Zsolt polgármester személyében? In the person of the previous mayor, 
What is your opinion on George Borka, his political ambition? I'm not a voter in Dior. Even if I was in Dior, I would look for another uh, candidate. Let's not only talk about conflicts uh, only. Can you tell us one or two opposition politicians who are active, who are sympathetic enough for you, you respect them? I will not enumerate them because I don't want uh, their situation to turn for the worse. Uh, it's never any good news if you are praised from the other camp. If I hear that about Fidesz people, I already start being attentive like a hunting dog. Yeah, everybody should stay within their own side. What happens when you hear that? I look around, I become attentive. Thank you. Patrick Máté from Magyar Nemzet, what is your opinion? Uh, what is your opinion about the decision of the Ukrainian Secret Service is not allowing pre former President Poroshenko to leave Ukraine because according to information he was supposed to leave Ukraine. I'm more permissive than the public opinion is usually. Ukraine is, in, is at war. I don't know if our friend is here. Our Ukraine is at war. We can call it a military operation, but it is a bloody war. And in a bloody war, you cannot apply the same rules that you do in peacetime. So in peace, in that they have extraordinary rules in place, there are no elections, parties have been practically banned, the free press has been terminated. I think it's a bad, necessary, this bad that has to be accepted. I have not one word on this. If the Ukrainian security service thinks that it's a national uh, security risk if a certain person intends to leave, they have to intervene. Of course, you can always ask the question. If the Ukrainian citizens meeting with the Hungarian prime minister is a national security risk, then how do they want to become members of the EU? One last question. What is your opinion on Katalin Cseh from Momentum Party? It is in the interest of Hungary for Ukraine to get the 50 billion euro subsidies or aid from Europe. The question should be asked this way. Is it a good thing to support? Is it the right thing to support Ukraine? Yes, Hungary supports Ukraine. The largest ever humanitarian uh, action was launched when the war erupted. Which country, based on what needs and requirements and means they have, is a sovereign decision for each country. Hungary has made this decision. We are not giving any weapons to Ukraine. We are giving them money because they are getting money from the EU budget, quite substantial funds every month. And that includes our money as well. So at this moment, they are, uh, when they are getting, when we made decisions in the EU budget, we have allocated money for Ukraine. If they didn't get that money, the Ukraine state would not be able to function. But like every single cent in the budget of the European Union, that is also our money, one percent of our money. Whether we want to give more than that, Hungarians, Germans, Dutch, how much they want to give, we can discuss that. I don't think it would be blasphemy to discuss, yes, we need to support Ukraine. That is a rational thing to do. We don't think it's an intelligent proposal that this uh, support should happen through us taking out loans and should be done through the budget, the already approved budget of the EU. For European leaders to come together and discuss, do they want to support Ukraine? Should the Ukrainians be supported? How much should be? That's a legitimate discussion. Let's not break down our budget and let's not have to become indebted together with others. But otherwise, I don't say that giving support to Ukraine is not right. What we don't want to have happen is that we give the money from the budget and we do not see it. But in reality, we are basically spending money allocated to Hungary for assisting Ukraine because we are afraid that the money that is not being given to us, kept back from us, is giving, given to Ukraine. And when finally the situation comes that we should get the money this year, we are sorry we spent it on Ukraine. We are ready to discuss. There's a 
budget that needs to be allocated for this, we are ready to discuss. But not to take out any loans, and definitely not from the present budget of the European Union. Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Minister, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. We wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you for having us.